During the 90s, it seemed like gay cinema was finally taking off and becoming popular, thanks largely to the positive portrayal of gay characters in films like Clueless and the honest portrayals of gay tribulations in films like My Private Idaho. Follow the yellow brick road. So who you live with? With a friend. And you too? I live with my mother in the Bronx. Paris is Burning, which was filmed in the middle of the late 1980s, is one of the most well-known films that helped to define the gay cinema. Premiering in 1990 and hitting cinemas in 1991. Uh, just one second, I'll be back just now. A few moments later. <laughs> Sorry about that. Premiering in 1990 and hitting theatres in 1991, Jenny Livingstone's groundbreaking documentary kicked off a decade of queer films with a huge bang. Most moviegoers of the time had never seen anything like the daring characters portrayed in this documentary. Into the sunlight and onto the subway and get home and still have all their clothes and no blood running off their bodies. Those are the femme realness queens. And usually it's a category for young queens. Some of them say that we're sick, we're crazy, and some of them think that we are the most gorgeous, special things on earth. Livingstone emphasizes the humanity of the subjects by highlighting the stigmatization, alienation, and the discrimination that led to the necessity for a ballroom community. The film celebrated the beauty and the bravery it takes to uplift each other in the gay community. Upliftment that was done through music, dance, and self-expression. Something that was always ignored or hidden by Hollywood. Described by some critics as the gay Thelma Louise, Greg Arakis, The Living End, released in 1992, announced him as the ultimate wild child of gay film. In a film Two Gay Guys Living with HIV goes on a road trip after killing a homophobic cop. Janet Maslin of the New York Times found The Living End to be a candid, freewheeling road movie, with the power of honesty and originality, as well as the weight of legitimate frustration. Miraculously, it also has a buoyant, mischievous spirit that transcends any hint of gloom. The film was made on a budget of $20,000 and ranked in over $600,000, making it a box office success. A clear indication that audiences wanted to see movies with substance, irrespective of whether the lead characters are gay or not. In 1999, Burlesque King, Harry, the son of an abusive American father and a Filipino mother, escapes to Manila with vengeance on his mind. After finding work as a dancer in one of Manila's gay clubs, Harry creates a nurturing circle of friends and finds the strength to confront the family that he left behind. This Filipino film was not... I only saw now that I didn't change my sign behind me. Let's change it. Um, that work. Um, other creators do this for a transition. I'm not good with transitions like that, so I hope I'm not going to cut myself off. That's much better. This Filipino drama was nominated for four international film awards, and despite this, it has been deemed inferior to the first film, Midnight Dancers, which received positive reviews from the Toronto Film Festival. However, Midnight Dancers was banned by the Movie and Television Review and Classifications Board. Burlesking is a second film in the gay theme trilogy of Mal Gianglo and Ricky Lee about the lives of macho dancers and men who work as strippers in Manila's gay bars. The first is Sibak Midnight Dancers, the third is Twilight Dancers. Despite what you think of Burlesking, it sheds light on the troubles that so many gay men have to endure and personal tragedies that lead to a life beyond their control. If you're new to the channel, I post videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to click like and subscribe so you can stay up to date as soon as I post new videos. For a similar video to this one, click on this link.